Hi and welcome back. So it appears that David Sinclair has added something to his longevity stack. Let's now take a look at what he takes and why he takes it. Harvard scientist Dr. David Sinclair is a renowned proponent of extending the average human lifespan and health span. He once told the Harvard Gazette, over the last 20 years, there have been a number of molecules that have been found to retard the aging process, at least in animals and potentially a couple of drugs that are in humans. That made me optimistic that somebody who might make it to 150 has already been born. Like many other longevity enthusiasts, myself included, who hope to extend their lifespan or at least their health span, Professor Sinclair isn't waiting for these age retarding molecules to be tested fully in humans. With his knowledge of the latest aging research, the Harvard professor has put together his own supplement and drug regime, which he believes will make him age more slowly. And luckily for us, Dr. Sinclair, unlike other so-called experts, isn't shy about sharing the supplements and the drugs he takes in hopes of achieving a longer life. David Sinclair takes one gram of NMN each morning. NMN, short for nicotinamide mononucleotide. It's an NAD precursor. NAD standing for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, which restores the declining NAD levels that naturally occur as we age. Of the anti-aging compounds on his list, NMN is possibly the most well studied in humans to date. Clinical trials in humans, of which there have been 16, have shown that NMN improves physical performance and sleep quality, strength and walking speed, insulin sensitivity and skin aging, as well as cholesterol levels, blood pressure and also weight. This in addition to the many animal studies showing that NMN reverses aspects of age related diseases, including cardiovascular disease and neurodegenerative diseases. Let's move on to trans resveratrol. David Sinclair takes one gram of resveratrol each morning. Resveratrol is a plant based polyphenol which activates longevity associated sirtuin enzymes. Resveratrol can be found in grapes and therefore also in red wine. A recent study showed that resveratrol enriched wine reversed aging in humans. Animal studies have shown that resveratrol delays heart and skeletal muscle aging, promotes kidney health, boosts memory, delays ovarian aging and reduces brain cell inflammation. Furthermore, both resveratrol and NMN have been shown to improve cognition by removing senescent cells. Additionally, resveratrol has a synergistic effect on combating liver aging when combined with the next compound on the list, that being metformin. Professor Sinclair takes 800 milligrams of metformin in the evening. Metformin is a prescription medication for type 2 diabetes. However, through its blood glucose lowering effects and other mechanisms, it's now been established as an anti-aging compound also. Animal studies have shown that metformin boosts immune function, it protects against reproductive aging, it limits deterioration of multiple organs, it prevents muscle atrophy when combined with leucine, it reverses intestinal aging, prevents tendon degradation, and it reduces fat in obesity. Next on the list is spermidine. Dr. Sinclair says he takes one milligram of spermidine each morning. Spermidine naturally occurs in sperm, but it can also be isolated from wheat germ. It can also be found in foods like cheese, soybeans, legumes, and also mushrooms. The anti-aging effect of spermidine comes from its ability to induce autophagy. Autophagy is the body's way of recycling dead and damaged cells. Animal studies have shown that spermidine boosts blood flow and promotes cardiovascular health. It enhances immunity against cancer. It counters brain inflammation and anxiety, and it slows the aging of the liver. Let's move on to quercetin. David Sinclair says he takes 500 milligrams of quercetin each and every morning. Quercetin is a polyphenol known to have a senolytic effect, meaning it removes senescent cells. These cells are thought to drive the aging process by promoting 
chronic low-grade inflammation and also NAD depletion. In research studies, quercetin is usually combined with a chemotherapy drug that's used to treat leukemia. With limited age-related studies examining quercetin or dacetinib individually, it's unclear whether combining the two is actually necessary. So more studies testing these compounds individually are needed to confirm this hypothesis. Let's now look at fisetin or fisetin. Like quercetin, fisetin is a polyphenol with senolytic properties. Professor Sinclair says he takes 500 milligrams of fisetin each morning. Animal studies have shown that fisetin alleviates cognitive dysfunction and brain inflammation. It reduces depression-like behavior, it shields the kidney from damage, and it increases muscle size and muscle strength, as well as extending lifespan. Moving on, let's take a look at vitamin D3 and vitamin K2. David Sinclair takes between 4,000 and 5,000 international units of vitamin D3 and between 180 and 360 micrograms of vitamin K2 per day. Combining vitamin D3 with omega-3s and exercise is associated with a 60% lower risk of cancer in older adults. Dr. Sinclair says he takes 83 milligrams of aspirin every day, which is associated with conflicting evidence on whether or not it lowers the risk of cardiovascular disease. However, in an interview, David Sinclair said he will continue taking aspirin until he's convinced by conflicting evidence. Low dose aspirin has also been associated with reduced cancer risk. Let's move on to TMG or trimethylglycine. Dr. Sinclair says he takes between 500 and 1000 milligrams of TMG every day. In an interview, he said that he takes TMG because nicotinamide levels increase in response to NMN supplementation. When these high levels of nicotinamide are excreted through our kidneys, it depletes our body's methyl groups. But these methyl groups are needed for a whole range of metabolic processes. So David Sinclair takes TMG to restore these methyl groups. He adds that he doesn't know if TMG is necessary as the body makes its own methyl groups. But since TMG is safe and fairly expensive, he takes it just as a precaution. At this year's Abundance 360 Summit, David Sinclair was interviewed by longevity advocate Dr. Peter Diamadis, who asked him if he now takes rapamycin. David Sinclair answered, on and off, yes, but he did not mention a dose. Rapamycin modulates the immune system and is prescribed as an immune suppressant to prevent kidney transplant rejection. While rapamycin increases the lifespan of animals more than any other compound yet tested, if taken too early in life, it can actually stunt growth and development. Additionally, in other animal studies, it's been shown to reverse the graying of hair, it prevents muscle weakness, it improves gut health, inhibits bone loss, improves reproductive health and mitigates cognitive impairment. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. As David Sinclair said many, many times, but is very often ignored by his sceptics, he can't be sure that what he's doing is going to extend his lifespan or even his health span. But he's confident that what he's doing is not causing him any harm and it is relatively cheap. Well, relatively cheap for him. As for me, the only supplement I've taken that seems to have caused me a negative effect is creatine. But as the channel name implies, this is an experiment. So I will continue to experiment with things like creatine um, and I will check to see what effects it has on my body in my biometric tests and also in my quarterly blood tests. Let me know what supplements you take. If you follow a similar regime to the one that I take or David Sinclair takes, are you worried that some of the supplements you're taking have not yet been fully tested in humans? 